Alrighty. Okay, so ignore what's happening with my hair. I am testing something out for another video, trying to curl my hair using heatless methods. So just disregard that. Hey, welcome back to my channel, Accidental Beauty. If you guys are new, welcome. My name is Laura. Today, I am going to be doing a full face using new products. These aren't new launches or anything because your girl's broke. So these are just older products that it's basically a collection of makeup from my friends that they didn't want anymore so i'm gonna and they're all they're all products that i haven't tried before some from one or two of them from brands that i haven't tried before the other products like i've tried the brand but not like this category of product so if you guys want to see all the products my first impressions my thoughts my final look then please keep on watching So the only two things, two to three things, I guess, that I don't have something new for is brows and primers. So I'll be doing those, but they're like old products that are tried and true. So those are the only parts of my makeup routine today that I know how they're going to turn out. Oh yeah, and then I also don't have a concealer, but I'm hoping I can use a couple different products to recreate that effect. As always, I do my brows with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Taupe. All right, so I am going to prime my skin with the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. All right, so this is the bag of stuff that we're gonna be working with today. I'm very excited. So, all right, looks like primer has set in. So we're gonna start off with foundation. I'm really, really nervous about this because I just had a horrible, horrible skin reaction to another foundation that I tried out. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen again. I am going to be trying out the Pure 4-in-1 Liquid 14-Hour Wear Foundation with SPF 15. Looks something like this. I don't actually know how old this is. Looks like they redesigned the logo a little bit. All right, so this looks like some old packaging, so I don't know how old this is. But uh, yeah, we're gonna use it anyways. And this is in the shade Light. It is expired, so I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm just gonna shake it up a little bit. I know Raw Beauty Christy, I don't know if she like swears by this brand, but she uses this brand a lot and I trust her opinion, so wish me luck. And, oh, it's just a pump. Okay, I thought she has one that has like a sort of stick applicator. I guess that isn't the case. Pure minerals, I thought it was pure cosmetics. Anyways, I guess I'm gonna just apply this on the back of my hand and then I think I'll, you know what, do I have my sponge here? I do. I think I might apply half my face with a sponge and half the face with a brush and see if that makes any difference. So I'll just do a couple pumps. Ooh, she liquidy. Okay, so that's what it looks like. I'm just gonna spray my sponge with some Fix Plus because I don't feel like wetting it. Oh, and I locked it. Kind of smells, smells a little chemically, but not too, too bad. Oh, okay, so it's a pretty light, you know what, I'm just gonna tap this on. Okay, so it's a bit of a lighter finish than I'm used to. And I feel like the sponge is kind of absorbing some of it as they tend to do. That is really nice. It's definitely lighter coverage than I typically want. I don't know if you can even see because the lights are on so bright. But we're gonna move on to the brush side. You know what, I should have put this down first. Genius. All right, so that's about one pump, one generous pump. Okay, definitely retaining more of it on the brush side as I expected. Okay, so I turned down the light so you can see this side I applied with a makeup sponge, this side I applied with the brush. Not the biggest difference. I feel like actually, it's interesting, the brush applied it thicker, but it's sitting a slightly cakier, whereas the makeup sponge side blended it in nicer 
So I'm just gonna blend the other side in with the sponge. You know what, so far, really, really nice natural coverage. I usually opt for a thicker, more full coverage foundation for photo shoots, but you know what? I'm kind of liking this. So I'm just gonna apply a bit more with the brush on the other side of the face and then blend it in with the makeup sponge. Okay, so I think I applied a little bit too much because you're starting to be able to see it's looking a little cakey. I kind of wish I had some powder to set this with because it looks like it's gonna slip and slide around quite a bit. So I'm really gonna have to like set this with setting spray. I feel like my base might have been a bit too slippery. Like it's already creasing. That kind of worries me. Wow, I'm already getting full separation over here where I've got an eczema patch. I'll just turn down the light so you can see. In the underground world, living low key. I'm gonna give it a minute to sink in. It's definitely creasing in some areas, which I'm a little concerned about. Under my eyes for sure, and especially that eczema patch that I just showed you. It's like completely separating from there. Everywhere else it looks okay, like even around the tip of my nose where foundation usually separates. It's separating, but it's not too, too bad. Feels like it's dried. Now this is probably a bad idea. I might have to start my foundation over again after this, but uh, Pure also makes this CC Cushion Foundation. It's called Air Perfection. I have the shade Light. It has not been opened. Oh, you can actually refill the product. That's cool. Uh, all right, so I guess I'm just gonna open it like this. Ah! smells. really hope this isn't expired because it's liquid. All right, so it comes with this little like applicator. I think I might just use a brush. I don't know. And then how the fuck do you... Is that mold? Oop. The sponge like completely <laughs> dissolved. It doesn't smell bad, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna trust it, but the sponge here is like completely, it's dissolved everything it can, I think. It says it's light. I guess that's kind of light, but it looks kind of more yellowy toned, in my opinion. All right, I guess I'll try using this thing. So I guess you just like, go like, ooh. Basically, I'm gonna dip this little thing into the cushion. I always like hate the, ugh, I hate the idea of cushion foundations because they just seem so messy. And this looks definitely way darker than my foundation, but it says that it's light. Oh, that is definitely a different shade. But I'm gonna see if I can kind of like spot conceal with this other foundation. No, that's probably a bad idea. Oh well. Cause this is supposed to be a lighter texture. So I'm hoping I can kind of prevent the creasing and separation that's happening. Oh, that's actually not the worst. I'm gonna leave it there. You can definitely tell that it's a different color. <laughs> that honestly doesn't look too, too bad. Oh, now I just separated it. Ugh. It's like moving around my face so much. I don't know what the hell that's about. Maybe I'll just use some of the foundation again because it's thicker. Okay, not gonna touch it really want to like set this with powder, but I don't have a new powder to try out. So I'm really trying to leave this at new products. 
All right, so uh, next I'm gonna highlight and contour using the, I just got a sample of the Cover FX contour kit. Got this in like a really old Sephora order. And this one is actually neutral medium. So it's for medium skin tones, you can't even see. It's for medium skin tones with neutral undertones. I have neither of those things. I've got pretty pale skin with a sort of yellow golden undertone. But we're gonna try and make this work. They have a very helpful diagram at the top where they have a model and then they have numbers corresponding with the number on the samples of where to put your products, which I think that really helps. Okay, it says here the contour kit makes sculpting simple. Each kit includes four shades of the ultra creamy best-selling total cover cream foundation formula essential to beautifully contouring and highlighting your face. So I think these are just like cover effects foundation shades and I want to try and use all four shades. So we're going to start off with highlighting. So let's open up the highlighting shade and this goes pretty much like where I put concealer. So like under my eyes, nose, forehead, Cupid's bow, and chin. Okay, so I'll just open up the sample. Oh, okay. It is a cream formula. Pretty sure this is the shade that I am in Cover FX Foundation. All right, I'm gonna try using a small flat brush. Huh. I feel like this coverage is like way, way thicker than my foundation. Oh, it's actually quite light. Okay, maybe I haven't used this shade before. That's nice. So surprise, we do have a concealer type situation happening. Actually, you know what? I might try and sculpt out my brows with this. If I've got any product left. Ooh, this really, really brightens. You know what? That finish is really, really nice. Oh, that looks so, so nice. So far it's layering on top of the foundation actually really, really nicely. I am impressed. Uh, okay, let's do a little bit down the nose. This is actually one sample that I might end up using everything. Oh, I just love the way that it's sitting under my eyes. The nose is kind of getting a little bit cakey, which I think was my fault for using too much foundation. All right, let's do the forehead area. I'm gonna attempt to conceal my, or sort of carve out my brows with this. actually worked pretty nicely. Ooh, that really brightened. Okay, so I got, I've got a bit left. I'm just gonna go a little bit lower under my eyes and see if I can sort of reduce the cakiness that's happening there. Okay, I think that looks good. And I've pretty much used up this sample. So do we wanna highlight first? Let's contour first, and then I'm gonna use the like highlighting shade, which actually might be a bit too dark. So I might end up using that as, hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna use the, the highlight shade here, which is probably gonna to be too dark for me. I'm gonna use that as an eyeshadow. So let's move on to the contour. It says you could use like three or four. Three is just regular contour and four is like a deeper, darker contour. So because I don't have a bronzer shade, I'm kind of thinking, hmm. you know what? Let's start out with the lighter contour, contour all the areas that I want to contour. And then I might deepen it up with the darker one. So let's try that really worried that these are going to be super, super dark on me. 
Ooh, okay, so this is kind of like, wow, it looks really yellow on screen. It's really not that yellow, but it looks like a warmer shade. So now I'm kind of wondering if I should use that as a bronzer. What does this one look like? Yeah, this one's a bit ashier, a bit cooler toned. Not ashier, but like it's a bit cooler toned. So now I'm thinking maybe, you know what, maybe I'll mix the two of them. That might be the best plan. The only contouring brush I have is this one, which I feel like might be a bit too big and not the right shape, but I'm gonna work with what I have. Or you know what? But then I have to wash this after, but this might be really good to lay it down. You know what? Let's just try this brush that I use for foundation. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this. Basically dip into both shades. Can't really show you while I'm trying to hold it. I don't know if any of it picked up on the brush, but let's find out. Oh, okay. Okay, and then let's try blending it with this. Hmm, I think I actually really like working with cream products. Kind of did this side a little low. All right, let's try picking up product with this brush. I'm just gonna dip into the darker shade. Okay, now I overdid it. Let's try and wipe some of this off. Okay, so the good thing, the good thing about cream products is they move. The bad thing about cream products is that they move. But you know what? I actually really like this. Like, I think this kit, like these shades are a little bit too dark for me. I'd probably go one shade group up, like one shade group lighter, but the formula and consistency is really really nice okay it's looking a little bit orange i'm gonna take the lighter shade which i know is orange but i'm gonna try warming up like around my face yeah this is definitely too dark for me just still dipping into the lighter shade i'm pretty much gonna leave it there i'm just gonna take do we want to do the cushion i think i'm gonna take a little bit more of that cushion foundation you just kind of like lightly go over. Well, actually it doesn't, hmm, it looks kind of bad in person. I'm just gonna lightly go over what I just did and then just use a sponge. It's really annoying cause like I wanna deepen it but it's too orangey warm tone. It looks kind of bad. It's not the worst ever, but it's not, it's not great either. So I am going to be using the e.l.f. blush palette. I've got a separate video where I try out each of the shades, do a look with each one. If you want to see more information about this palette and want to see how each of the shades look individually, see all the different looks that I created, you can check out that video. I'll link it here and I'll link it below. As always, I'm just going to use like a fluffy... This one's actually a highlighter brush from e.l.f., but this is what I use to apply my blush. So... Coated the brush really nicely. My contour bronzer situation is a little bit dark today, so I feel like it's kind of clashing a little bit. But it's really, really pretty. You can barely see the glitter up close, but I feel like it's got a little bit of a sheen to it, but that might be the foundation that I'm wearing. Pigmentation is definitely there. All right, today we're gonna dip into the fourth shade in the Dream Palette. It's called Ethereal. It's like a really beautiful pinky, purpley, duochrome moment. Oh my god, this is stunning. This is ridiculous. Oh my god. Can you guys see that? So I realized I forgot to contour my nose, so let's do that. So I'm going to take the smaller side of the Anastasia Beverly Hills brush that they include in their palettes, and... This is gonna be so orange. I think I'm gonna mix both contour shades together. what that did to be honest. I'm gonna add a little bit more highlight because I feel like I just erased all of it. So let's do eyes now. I'm gonna take a look at this Illuminate 
uh, Starlight shade, which is supposed to be like your cheekbone highlight from the Cover FX palette. I think it's like a rose gold color. So I got that, and then I also have the Bonnie Duminizer, Liquid Bonnie Luminizer, all over highlight, all over highlighter and all over illuminator from the Balm. And it's this gold color, also supposed to be a highlighter, but it's definitely way too dark for my skin. So let's take a look at that. Oh, okay. I'm gonna see if there's a way, this is stunning. I don't know if you guys can see it at all. There we go. I'm thinking I'm gonna put the Bonnie Duminizer all over my lids. I'm gonna do an inner corner highlight with the Starlight shade and then maybe I'll do sort of like a, like just deep in the crease with the contour shades. Let's try that. You know what, maybe we'll do the contour shades first. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the same brush that I did my nose contour not super successfully with. And I just want my nose to look slimmer. Hmm. Anyways, uh, so we're gonna go back in here. It's like a little sticky, this formula. This is actually not too, too bad. Just worry about it sliding all over the place because it's liquid. All right, that's not terrible. And now I guess I'll just put this all over my lids. Oh my God, that is stunning. Okay, doing a much more neutral eye than I typically do. My eyes look so naked in comparison. Um, I wanna see if I can kind of like deepen up the outer V. I'm gonna go into the darker contour shade. That's about as dark as I can go, okay. I'm hoping that liner and lashes can kind of make this look a little bit more intense. Um, all right. Next, let's do lips. I am going to use the On Point Lip Liner in the shade Teddy. Looks something like that. This is very similar to my natural lip color. Super, super creamy. That looks really cute. Looks very similar to Kylie Cosmetics Candy K in my opinion. All right, and now I'm gonna use the Pure Lip Gloss Stick in the shade Honey Pie. Looks just like lip balm really, but, oh, it is kind of glossy actually. I think this might be a little stale. Feels really, really nice on the lips. If a little sticky. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the Tarte Sex Kitten Eyeliner. I got this as a sample in the Magic Star palette, I think. It was one of their holiday palettes. I thought this one was double-sided, but I guess not. It's just a, uh, like, pencil or gel liner, does it say? doesn't say. I thought I had a liquid liner from them too, but maybe not. Oh wow, it's so oily around my eyes because of all the cream products that it's a little too slippery. Well, it made a really nice wing. This is way more natural than I usually do my makeup. Oh wow, we have some major under eye creasing right now. Lining thing sort of worked. I guess I'll tight line, cause why not? All right, I'm gonna curl my lashes. In now I'm gonna be trying the Bad Gal Bang mascara from Benefit. I got a sample from Top Box. They do this every now and then where they, I think have extra products from their paid subscription service and whatever they have in extras, I guess they just give away to like the first however many people. So, and it's usually like, it's all minis of products, but it's still like you get to try high-end products for free. And then if you like them, you can go buy them. Sometimes they include vouchers. So it's pretty cool. And you get like, I think a decent amount of product in here. Three grams, it's 0 0.1 ounces. Look at that wand. Oh, we got some transfer. You know what? Not the biggest deal. I'll fix it later. Oh, wow. 
Look at that wand. Hold on, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can actually see it. All right, ooh. Oh man, I really like this. I really like the mascara, but I really like the wand because you can get like every individual lash. And I feel like it doesn't lengthen so, so much. It does a bit of lengthening, but it really volumizes. I feel like my eyes look dramatically different sizes. Oh my God, it layers on top of itself so nicely without it looking too spider lashy. There was this one girl my first year European history class, my first year of university, and she just had like, I don't know what mascara she used, but she did way too many coats. And she had like these like spider leg lashes. They were so ridiculously long, but they were so like cakey and gross looking. I don't know, they just look so weird. So every time I put too much mascara on, I think of her. So I don't know if you can see, but my eyeliner transferred a little bit to my crease. So I'm just going to blend that. Maybe we can get a little darkening happening. And because I use pretty much all cream products, I'm just really worried that everything's going to slip and slide around a lot. So I'm really going to have to set my face, which I don't have a new setting spray. So we'll just use the one that I have. Now we're going to put on lashes. I feel like these are going to be way too intense for the look that I have. Oh my god. Okay, so these are the Alice Faux Mink Lashes from Amazon. They are ridiculous. So they like slide out. They come in like this stunning box. Oh my god, there's... There are three pairs in here. I thought there was only one pair. Oh, that makes me so happy. Oh my god, these are ridiculous. Okay, so let's try these on. These are definitely going to be too long on me, so I'm going to have to trim them, but they have like this really cool crisscross effect happening. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. All right, so I'm just going to chop off like, I don't know, like, you can't even see anything because my background isn't the same. I'm just going to cut off like one, like you can see that lashes are kind of put in like, like sections, like as if they're a bunch of individual lashes glued onto a band if that makes sense so I'm just gonna cut off the end like section i forgot to do the inner corner highlight so i'm gonna do that quickly i can't believe i totally forgot so i'm gonna use the illuminate starlight shade from the cover effects palette sky shades of pearl and green Kind of reminds me of the Becca highlight in the shade Opal, I think. So I don't have new lash glue, so I'm just gonna use my regular one. All right, so I am a noob and a half and I lost my lash glue. So I took out my like curling rods. This is what my hair looks like so that I could go to Walmart, buy more lash glue, come back and continue filming. It's been probably two hours or so since that happened. I had dinner and now we're back to filming. So sorry for the abrupt change. Now, when we last left our heroes, I was in the middle of trimming my lash. So I think I'm gonna try gluing it on as is. Watch, I'm gonna find my lash glue tomorrow and I'm gonna be so pissed off. Oh man. Look at that lash. Holy crap. These are so freaking pretty. I almost actually, when I went out to Walmart, when I went out to Walmart, I almost actually bought more lashes, but you know what? These might be my new favorite lashes. When I close my eyes, it totally doesn't look natural, but holy. Before this card gets full, I'm going to do setting spray. I'm going to use the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Wait, no, I'm not because I'm not going out, so it doesn't matter. All right, so this is the final look. Burning hearts in darkest places. Oh, there's never been a better time to feel alive. I found no way we pass the lines where truth will Overall, I'm really, really, really happy with the way that this look turned out. I just feel it's, I feel like I look different. <laughs> like, I feel like I don't 
look like I normally do. And it's probably, honestly, it's probably the lashes. Oh man, like I just, I look like a different person. Like my eye shape has completely changed. It's so weird. Okay, so let's uh, do a breakdown of all the products that we talked about today because I have been wearing them for a good like almost eight hours. So this is actually a pretty good like wear test video as well. All right, so I think we started off with the Pure 4-in-1 Liquid Foundation. I think it wore pretty well. Okay, it's breaking apart in that, that one problem area, but other than that, it doesn't look like it's separating. Uh, I did get some creasing, as I mentioned before, some creasing under my eyes. Um, not too, too bad around my smile lines but really just that one area where I already had dryness. But yeah, overall, I think I like this foundation. It is a little cakey, so that was probably on me for layering too much of it. I guess it doesn't build all that nicely. It's kind of, I guess like, what would I say? Like light to almost medium coverage, but kind of more light coverage. I guess I should keep that in mind. It is very, very beautiful coverage, but if you've got more discoloration or if there are, let's say like beauty marks or freckles that you want to cover and you're looking for something, or even like scarring, like things like that, that you would want, or in general, if you just want a fuller coverage foundation, I don't know if this is for you. For me personally, oh yeah, and it looks like it, kind of settled in my forehead wrinkles. Like I didn't hate it. I actually, I did like it. It felt mostly comfortable to wear throughout the day. So I think I'd give this a four out of five if I'm being generous. Cause it's not bad. It just like from a distance, like, I don't know, looking in the monitor or looking in the mirror over here from a distance, it actually looks pretty nice. But in person, in person is actually not too, too bad. I just wish that it didn't cake so much. So yeah, I give it a four out of five and I probably would have given it lower if it wasn't for like my user error. So most of the issues that I have with it, I think are my fault. All right, next, the Pure Cushion Foundation. I like this. Um, I didn't love it and I feel like the areas that I used it to touch up still creased or separated but I feel like if I use this on its own it probably would give pretty nice it probably would give pretty nice coverage so I think I'd give this probably give it a four out of five as well um, but I do need to use this a bit more to get get like a full impression of it Focus. Okay, next I think I did the Cover FX Contour Kit. I guess I can go through like shade by shade, but overall I give this a 5 out of 5. Love the finish. Definitely would consider buying this in the right shade for me uh, because the contour shades were way too orange for my skin. If there was one, like a light one for sort of yellow undertoned people, so basically something with not as much yellow and orange in the contour. I think I would really like this. I guess we can go through all the shades individually, but like I'm not gonna rate each one. The under eye highlight and sort of like face highlight, but not the cheekbone highlight. The first shade that I tried, love the finish. It did crease a little bit, but it's not too, too bad. And I feel like it really brightened my face and I just love that. Uh, the illuminating starlight, highlight, which I used, where did I use that as an inner corner highlight? Absolutely stunning. I feel like I probably could have gotten away with using that as a cheekbone highlight. Uh, there is a little bit left, so I think I will be saving that and using that another time. The two contour shades, I love the finish and I love the, just the overall texture of the product. Hated the shades, but this is not the right shade for me, so I know that. 
Um, but yeah, really, really enjoyed this. Definitely recommend that. So definitely five out of five. Okay, the blush kit. Um, so I use the shimmery shade. Really, really love it. Uh, it actually stayed on really, really nicely all day. The little like micro glitter didn't get in the way. I was actually sort of expecting a bit more of a glow, which you can barely see. I'm not upset about that. I was just kind of expecting that and like I wouldn't have minded that. But overall, really, really pretty shade. Really like the way that it's working with this whole look and the way that it works with my hair as well. I mean, I have a separate video, but like for that particular shade, give it a five out of five, loved it. All right, the Anastasia Dream Glow Kit. I have a separate video where I talk about all of these shades in more detail, but uh, just talking about the shade Ethereal today, absolutely loved it. It just, it added an extra dimension to this look. I just love how it interacts with the blush, with my hair, with what's going on in my eyes, just everything. It works so seamlessly. Pigmentation is definitely there. Definitely did not lose its shine throughout the day, so I love that. Five out of five. All right, the, the Balm Bonnie Duminizer, the liquid highlight that I used on my eyes. Let's take a look at how that wore throughout the day. So it's basically gone. Uh, like it's there a little bit, but it's kind of gone. Uh, and that's really unfortunate. I think that might've been my, might've been user error. I'm not sure because I feel like I patted it in and blended it too much. I feel like if I just kind of stamped it on and just left it, it might have been a bit more pigmented and might have lasted better throughout the day. So I don't know, like for for initial pigment, I give it five out of five, but I have to dock marks for it not lasting throughout the day. I think I'll give it a 3.75, but I'm curious to try this a couple, like to wear it a bit more and try out a couple different application methods and see if that improves anything. All right, the Tarte Sex Kitten Eyeliner. Let's take a look. So I cleaned it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. It kind of like smudged on my lower lashes, which that never happens to me. Like I don't have oily eyelids at all. So I have no idea how it smudged. Oh, you know what? It's probably from my lining my waterline, but like I don't know, that never happens to me. And on my top lashes, like it's almost gone. The wing is still there, but not as bright. Now that could have been because I put so many cream and like sort of oily products on my lids, it kind of faded it, but I was kind of having higher hopes. Even when I applied it, it wasn't as dark and richly pigmented as I was hoping for. So that was unfortunate. I don't recommend this. Unless you want a black eyeliner that's kind of more like subdued, which kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but if you want a black eyeliner that isn't super dark, but just gives like a little bit of something, then I guess this is the product for you. For most people who want like kind of a more bold, richly pigmented, like super black eyeliner, not for you. Now I know that this is like a, what is this, like a gel? pencil or whatever. So I know that they're they're generally not going to be as richly pigmented as a liquid eyeliner. Still, I was kind of expecting more, especially from a brand like Tarte. So I don't know. I think I give this a three out of five. Don't love it. The Benefit Bad Gal Bang Mascara. How did that do? I think it really coated my lashes nicely. I like the applicator. I like that it lengthened my lashes. It gave them really, really nice volume. And I don't know what else to say. I like this a lot. I think I give this a 4.75 out of 5. I wish that this was a little bit more lengthening. And I feel like the formula was a little bit thick. That might have just been me. But I really did like this mascara. I'm really excited to keep using this. So overall, like I, I really didn't hate it. I really actually enjoyed it a lot. I just wish there was like a little bit more lengthening. And then the, what was this? The Pure On Point Lip Liner in the shade Teddy. I really like this. Um, I felt like it was really creamy and smooth to apply. And 
the color, like the pigmentation was great. It lasted through food. Actually, I had a couple slices of pizza, so it lasted pretty nicely through that. Um, I mean, I reapplied it, but like it lasted almost completely through that. Uh, the only thing I don't like, so every time you twist the cap, it actually sharpens the pencil. So on the one hand, it's good because you always have a sharp point, but on the other hand, like you're pretty much limited to this size pencil. I can't seem to figure out how to make it come out more. So it seems like every time you open this up, you have to use whatever's there. And if you kind of wear that down, then you have to close it, sharpen it, open it. Like it just seems like a lot. I kind of wish that you could, I like the sharpening feature, but I wish that you could kind of control how much product is coming out. Like, I don't want to have to keep like sharpening it every single time for a little, like teeny tiny little bit to come out. I don't know if that made sense, but yeah, if they could just like redesign those a little bit, that would be cool. But keeping the sharpening function because I actually do like that a lot. And then second last thing I think was the pure lip gloss stick. I actually surprisingly really, really like this for someone who hates lip gloss. This is really more like a glossy lip balm, I guess is the best way to describe it. It's really not a lip gloss. I did think it is kind of sticky, so I don't love that, but otherwise it's a beautiful color. It matches the lip liner really, really nicely. Feels very nice and hydrating on the lips. I don't really have much else to say. And then last, but certainly not least, these lashes. You guys, these are the best fucking lashes I have ever tried. I feel like I say that in every single lash review video because I'm always like, I just get so excited about bold lashes. Ooh, this isn't even sticking, but oh my God, these are just incredible. Like my eye shape looks completely different because of these lashes. Granted, I have them sticking, like I trim them. I didn't trim them as much as I normally would for like quote unquote, like normal everyday lashes. These are definitely for like, photo shoots and Instagram, let's be honest. And uh, they definitely make my eyes look kind of more, it's like that foxy look, I think that they're calling it, that with that like wide eye, like sort of cat-like, but like very stretched this way kind of eye. Um, so you kind of have like a smoky eye that extends your eye outwards. And that seems to be really popular. So I feel like these lashes actually give me that effect without going through all the eye contouring and whatever else is involved in that makeup look. Oh my God, I just love these so much. And I love that it comes in a three pack. So, I mean, these seem pretty durable, fingers crossed, uh, but I'm glad that I have two sort of like backup pairs for when these eventually, you know, crumble. Um, and these were pretty cheap also. I can't remember offhand. I think they're about 12 bucks. So 12 bucks for three pairs of lashes is absolutely amazing. It's like $4 a pair. So really, really not bad at all. I think that's everything. Hopefully, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of this look, what your favorite part of this look was, if you've used any of these products before or anything from these brands. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'll see you in my next video.